hi, uh, thank you for coming. Um, I am Renata, I am a UX researcher. I work with URA Design in improving um, usability and uh, of open source software. I am uh, started uh, doing UX research in 2016 when I did outreach for GNOME. So I did usability testing for GNOME for three months. Um, I'm also a member and a contributor to open source design and Flask and uh, Fedora. If you are interested in any of these to talk about me, uh, to talk with me, just please just reach out after the talk and I'd be glad to. So, um, what this talk is basically going to be about, it's um, just a very short and simplified approach to doing uh, user research and user testing. Um, I really like this quote, which says, uh, designs are assumptions until validated with end users. And how I uh, would explain this is um, that when designers and um, developers are building an interface, uh, they do that based on how they think and how they assumed it would be the best way for the users. Uh, but in the end, um, that approach quite often ends up be being proved wrong by end users. So that interface actually ends up being uh, too complicated to use and then everyone blames the users for not being very technical uh, and not understanding. Uh, that's why they do not understand the interface. And that's how the, um, the design and the, overall the software becomes non-inclusive because then it gets just targeted to uh, users who are more technical. And this problem just keep, uh, keeps spiraling. Uh, it, it becomes like a rat race. Um, it, it, it happens in every kind of software, but mostly in uh, open source uh, software usability. Um, there is a way to stop uh, the spiraling the pro of the problem, and the way to do that is uh, by doing user research. So um, what user research basically is, is um, a bridge that connects designers and developers with end users. So basically, with user research, you can translate um, the user's needs to designers and developers and make that connection. Um, there are a lot of ways to do user research. Um, here are listed just some of the, those methods. So it's usability testing, A-B testing, um, interviews, surveys, questionnaires, card source, tree testings, and uh, there's a lot of methods, but these are the main ones, and we are going to focus more on usability testing, since that is the most common method to uncover usability issues. Um, before we get into that, I would just like to quickly show you some examples of real applications that I've worked on uh, through the past year, and just, uh, like my way to try to convince you that uh, user research does work and it's really important. Um, so um, on, on the left side, uh, you have the before picture, which is a screenshot from HTTPS Everywhere, which is a browser extension. Um, so you can see this was pretty much a bunch of links and checkboxes and the language was really hard to use. Um, so most users uh, did not know how to use the extension, even how to enable and disable it, and so they had to watch tutorials to do that. Um, after conducting uh, user research, after we did some surveys and usability tests, we came up with uh, th that prototype, which is the one on the right. Um, so this is basically a more familiar uh, design patterns applied to the design uh, so that the user uh, can can find uh, and understand uh, the features uh, more intuitively. Uh, so we used uh, banners that are colored, uh, we used buttons, we used toggles uh, to save space, but also we used uh, 
help, tool tips, so that if someone does not understand what's a, uh, a part of the section of the um, extension, they can just click on it and they can find out more about what that does. Um, this is another example. This is uh, preferences redesigned from Thunderbird. Uh, so we did test this. Um, what was wrong about this is the, the sidebar has too, uh, too, many, uh, too many features and the users did not know how to navigate through them. And uh, what we did is we um, compiled these and uh, merged them together. So for example, privacy and security were separated before, so they didn't know uh, which one does what. So when we merged them, it became simpler to find what they were looking for. Um, this is uh, another example. This is Briar. Um, Briar is an open source security ch um, messaging app. They came up with a new feature that we implemented. The, the first prototype did not uh, go well in the user testings, so we uh, did uh, the redesign it and split the screen into two sections, and then that turned out uh, to be more usable. Uh, so. Um, I'm going to explain how to conduct a usability test. Um, there is a misconception that um, to conduct a usability test, you need a lot of resources, you need a big uh, fancy labs and to recruit a lot of people and also to have um, UX experts on to do the auditing, but that is not the case. Everyone can do it and uh, with just minimal resources and in just three steps that I will show you right now. Uh, so, to conduct a usability test, uh, first of all, you, you would start with Persona. And what Persona basically is, is uh, the, your targeted users. So, uh, for example, if you want to test for a more specific application, like it's, for example, Inkscape, you want to uh, target more designers um, so different designers from b different backgrounds. So designers uh, that are beginners, uh, designers that have started this profession uh, way before, or just designers that maybe have used alternatives to Inkscape and uh, that are very new to Inkscape. Um, or if you have, for example, um, another software which is like GNOME software, um, the way you want to choose uh, participants is uh, it, you have to include a more diverse range of people because uh, software is not like uh, GNOME software is not like Inkscape. Uh, th this is supposed to be used by everyone, so you include a lot of uh, gender uh, and uh, different technical backgrounds and professional backgrounds, and the. Number of testers, it really depends on the size of the usability test that you want to conduct. Um, usually, uh, five people is more than enough to uncover most usability problems. Because after five people, you will notice that the problems will uh, just repeat and you will not get any new findings and any new issues usability wise. So um, after we choose the personas, we the second step is doing the scenario tasks. So what we do here is basically we do some tasks that we give to each user when they start uh, the testing. Um, we observe them, how do they accomplish each task and keep notes about them. Usually, again, five to 10 is enough uh, tasks. Uh, more than that, it will be quite a problem to keep the participant concentrated and interested in the testing. The way you do the task, for example, uh, for uh, GNOME software, you could just uh, do a task like install an application and see how they install it. Um, you could do remove and install software and see how they navigate through the software and how easy it is for them to find it. Uh, or you can do update uh, preferences, for example. Um, you can see how they interact with the dialogue. Uh, you can do updates or any task really that you see is reasonable uh, and it suits the kind of testing that you want to conduct. 
Um, testing is the actual testing. It's uh, the final part, uh, the fifth part. So um, the tools you will actually need for testing are really simple. Uh, you basically need just a laptop, um, a notebook to keep notes, um, internet connection, and you need to see to sit next to the participant. Uh, give them the tasks and you should not talk to them during the test. So you just give them the tasks and you watch them accomplish them um, and you keep notes and after the testing is done you can ask each participant specific questions like for example if you notice that in a certain task uh, they seem to be frustrated or confused you can just ask them why did you feel like this um, where did you expect this menu to be or this button to be how would you change it or specific questions like that so that's basically usability testing um, another uh, method for doing user research is A-B testing. A-B testing is very similar to usability testing. Uh, it's basically what the name says. So you have a prototype A and a prototype B and you compare them side by side. So you set a limited uh, amount of time and give to each user uh, a prototype so that they can compare it. Uh, you compare it time-wise first and then uh, you compare how uh, the user experience was for each participant which performed better like uh, user experience wise and uh, the process is basically similar to the usability testing uh, another method for doing user research is um, surveys and interviews this is a great way to start the design so uh, before starting this is a great way to uh, know the audience know the for who are you designing for. So you can do surveys online or you can do in-person interviews to just find more uh, out more about each user and see how you can make a general big picture about the uh, users of the software. So then the designs can be based on uh, the audience. Um, another great way uh, to do user research is card sorting. Um, this is basically um, to it helps you to give uh, a structure to the information. So this is more information architecture wise. Um, you basically give uh, sticky notes to users and you give them the categories uh, of, of the menus that are related. So you give them to each user and then you uh, set them a task to rearrange them on how they think it would logically make sense to them. Um, and this is a great way to, for you to create a site map of the software and know how to organize the architecture of the information. Um, so these are just a few methods. As I mentioned, there's many more. Um, but after you conduct usability testing or surveys or A-B testing or no matter what method, you need to, to um, show the results to other people. That um, You can do that on a formal paper, you can do that in a form of an essay, you can do a live presentation if that's easier for you and other people to uh, get this information. You can do bug trackers although they can be a little tricky and get a little messy uh, because of a lot of comments, uh, but it's still a way uh, that you can use. Um, so uh, when you try to explain your findings of the usability testing, for example, uh, you want to try and visualize everything that you found out to be easier for others to understand. So you can use screenshot from the software um, you can highlight them, you can use charts, and then under them explain in words, in details, what each of them means. Um, another uh, great visual tool is heat maps. Uh, heat maps are basically tables uh, that show uh, how the usability testing or uh, A-B testing went in general. Um, so basically on one side you arrange all the tasks that you gave to the user and the, on the other side are a few boxes. Each box um, represent, each box color represents a diff, uh, how easy or difficult it was for the participant to accomplish the task. 
So for example, the green color means that it was really easy and user can, could intu intuitively uh, find everything. Um, the yellow is where users uh, started to struggle a bit but still finished uh, the task. Red is when they uh, exceeded the amount of time that it, it was uh, expected for them to finish the task. And the black ones are the ones that uh, the user just gave up and could not finish at all. And this is a great way for someone who doesn't uh, want to read every detail of the usability test report. So this just gives an overall idea by the colors. You can see, for example, which, um, which prototype was easier to use and which was more hard for the users. So um, hopefully we'll learn what uh, usability, user research is, uh, what methods we can use to improve that. Um, the whole point of the talk actually is to just to show everyone that um, you do not need to be an expert, a usability expert to do this. Anyone who is a designer or, or who is not a designer can do it. Uh, you just need a laptop, uh, internet connection, and then be willing to report those uh, usability bugs that you found. So you can, uh, this is a great way to help improve usability of open source software in general if you, uh, if you want to. Um, this is my information. Uh, these links are to uh, formal papers that I've done for the examples that I mentioned before. And you can contact me at the Nontagi Guide anywhere. Uh, I'd be glad to chat with all of you. And thank you so much again for coming. Um, I think we have time for questions. So if anyone wants to ask any question. Yeah, th <clears throat> thank you for the talk. I, I, my question is, in the heat maps, mm -hmm. uh, do you make any consideration when creating the heat map about the difficulty of the mm -hmm. task mm -hmm. or not? Because I see advanced tasks uh, are usually more in red. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, no, so we do not list them by how hard we assume the task is. So every task for a UX auditor is the same. We just uh, hand them to the user and then they will evaluate which is harder to accomplish. Not, it's not our job, it's the user's job to do that. Um, do you have any thought on how to do this kind of testing in a remote setting? So I, I work from home and um, I guess, I mean, of course I could find a space and um, recruit people locally, but I think a lot of contributors to the GNOME project work, work on GNOME from the comfort of their own homes. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any suggest suggestions for how to do this kind of testing in that context? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, this last part, can oh, you? Do you have any suggestions for how people, well, have you had any experience in doing um, remote UX testing or any suggestions for people who um, would like to con conduct tests, but it's, for whatever reason it's difficult to do the mm -hmm. testing in person? So you're asking basically, um, can you do uh, usability testing and user research uh, remotely? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. That, uh, that is actually a very great way to find uh, usability bugs. But I think still the best way is just being in person, one-on-one -on -one usability testing. Uh, because uh, when you are doing that through a software or camera, it's really hard for you to see how they react to the tasks. And when you are in person with them, you can just see their emotions and you can uh, very easily notice when they feel like more uh, frustrated and they do not know how to navigate through the site. So you can do that totally. Uh, you can use any software you want, you just uh, you need to face the camera and that's it. Uh, but in person, one-on-one -on -one usability testing is uh, the best way to uncover usability issues. I guess the, something you just said there is that the importance of having the camera to see the user. If you, if you are doing it remotely, having a webcam so you can see their face as well as their screen. Yeah, if they are comfortable with that, you can do that. But still, I think because you, it's, when you are both there, it's different experience and you catch the emotions different, differently. But you can totally do that too. Thank you. Thank you. 
Hi, I have uh, two quick questions. Um, the first one is, uh, do the users that are taking part in the testing, are they compensated generally? Do you mm -hmm, mm -hmm. pay them or are they volunteer? Yeah, so uh, it depends. Uh, that is uh, kind of a problem, to be honest, uh, to find users to test with. So previously I did usability testing uh, at my local hackerspace and we have an open source community there and they do understand what it's uh, contributing to an open source software and they uh, willingly did it. Um, but for other people who do not know what open source is, and we often need those people because at the hackerspace, uh, the range of uh, ages, it's basically students. And so when we need to recruit other people, other ages, we need to do that outside of the hackerspace and people do not generally know what you, uh, they do not know what uh, open source is and what contributing is. And on that case, you need to compensate a little bit, maybe just uh, a coffee or a gift card or something like that. My other uh, question is, um, I think there's no such thing as a perfect UX design, UI design. Uh, at what point can you call it like at what point on the heat map is mm -hmm. there enough green where you can say this is ready to ship? Yeah, so for example, in, the, in this case, you can see the first one has a lot of yellows and reds, which means basically, just if you see it on the first side, it means that it wasn't really easy to use. So the more cool toned colors, greens, uh, the better it's the usability. And it will never be all green, because that the perfect UI basically does not exist. Uh, some user might have problems uh, solving the, uh, each task, and that's very normal. So it's not going to be all green, but the more green it is, it means that the usability is better, and that's when you should uh, stop iterating and testing and doing more prototypes, basically. Another question? Okay, so thank you again and see you.